So dear students, uh, we are going to make a summarized presentation on project evaluation and selection. So we have already covered our theoretical discussion regarding project selection. And in our previous class also, we have started project evaluation and selection, but today, uh, we will uh, try to summarize especially four project evaluation and selection methods. One is known as payback period. Another one is internal rate of return, then net present value, then profitability index. When we say payback period, then you have to remember how much money you are investing or paying, and then when you will get your money back, that is called payback period. So it is known as the period you need to get back your invested money. Net present value is known as present value of cash, in flows minus present value of cash outflows. Internal rate of return is known at the rate of return where NPV is zero. It means present value of cash in flows and present value of cash outflows, both are equal. How can we calculate profitability index? Just use the formula of net present value, only one change. That is present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows. In case of net present value, we calculate net present value using present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows. The difference when we calculate profitability index, the present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows. Normally when we have to select only one project, only one project from two, three, four, five, you can use net present value. If net present value, after calculating net present value, you can select one project based on highest net present value. But when you have to select more projects within limited budget, your budget is limited, but you have to select more projects. Then it is better to use profitability index. Obviously, we will present today, we will prove today that to select more projects or it's called for capital rationing, means if you want to utilize your limited budget maximum, then it is better to use profitability index compared to net present value. Now, we will check first how to calculate payback period. If cash inflows are equal, then that is very simple. Why? Because if you invest Taka 10,000, and if you know that every year you will get Taka 2,000, then simply one can say it will take five years to get our money back. But when we have unequal cash flow, 
then we can use a formula to calculate payback period. And you are familiar with this formula. Some of your friends that have mentioned in my previous class about this formula. What it is, payback period equals A plus B minus C divided by D. How? Just see, we are given information about a project that if you invest Taka one lakh, you will get first year 34,432 Taka, second year 39,530, third year 39,359, and fourth year 32,219. Now, how can you calculate payback period? For calculating payback period, you need to calculate cumulative cash flows. Cumulative means addition, summation. So first year, your cash flow is same 34,000, 432. Second year, you have 39,530. So cumulative means taka 34,432 plus taka 39,530. You have 73,962. Third year, you have 39,359 cash inflows from the project. So if you add both, you will have 1,13,321. Fourth year, you have cash inflows of Taka 32,219. If you add 1,13,321 plus 32,219, you will have 1,45,540. Now, what is the elaboration of all these symbol? A. A means what? Then B means what and C means what? You can easily understand from this solution that what is A? A is the year, the year in which cumulative cash flow, cumulative cash flow is nearer to cash outflow one lakh. Again, listen carefully. A means the year in which cumulative cash flow is nearer to cash outflow. So your outflow is one lakh and here cumulative cash flow is 73,962. So the year is two, that means this year, cumulative cash flow is nearer to one lakh. After that, it exceeds one lakh. So this is not nearer. One lakh thirteen thousand is it already exceeds taka one lakh. So our the our value of a is two plus. So B means what? B means cash outflow. How much cash outflow we have? One lakh. C means cumulative cash flow of the year A. So cumulative cash flow of the year A is 73,962 divided by D. D means cash flow of the succeeding year. Succeeding year A. So our A is two, succeeding year is three. So you can calculate now, A equals to two plus B equals one lakh minus C 73,962 divided by D, 39,359. The result will be 2.66 years. So if you invest Taka one lakh in this project, you will get your money back 
at 2.66 years. This is your payback period of this project. So when we accept a project, if you have two, three projects, then if payback period is less, we will accept the project. So if you have a project having payback period of five years, another project having payback period of four years, you will accept the project of four years. Now, we will move to another method, project selection method that is called NPV. We are moving to calculating and PV, how do we calculate NPV, net present value? And we can calculate net present value by using a formula known as present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows. So again, I'm writing this NPV equals present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows. Now, you see that you are given this formula here. So if you invest in a project, your first year cash inflow divided by one plus discount rate. Discount rate. or it is known as minimum, minimum, minimum required return. So one plus discount rate to the power one, to the power one plus second year cash inflow divided by one plus discount rate to the power two plus third year uh, cash inflow divided by one plus discounted to the power three. If your project is five years, then you have to accumulate all these five years cash inflows to convert them to present below of cash inflows minus present below of cash outflows, or this is known as initial cash outlets. Now we can use, we can uh, uh, use a um, example. You see that same example we can use. Can you remember how much money we're investing? That is one luck in our previous problem. And each year cash inflows were given. First year cash inflows, uh, it, uh, inflows is taka 34,432. Second year taka 39,530. Third year, Taka 39,359. Fourth year, Taka 32,219. And divided by one plus discount rate to the power one. So here you have seen that it is given our discount rate is 12%. And the life of the project is four years. So we are converting our cash inflows to present value. These per is known as present value of cash inflows. And this part is known as present value of cash outflows. Now you can easily calculate. Taka 30,000 divided by 1.12 to the power one. Taka these divided by one plus 1.12 to the power two, three, four. And then make the summary of these you will get present below of cash inflows and then minus present below of cash outflows. The difference is known as NPV. So if you calculate these using your calculator, using your paper, you will find the result is taka 10,768. So you are given only one project information and NPV here, NPV, NPV is positive means we can say accepted, we can accept the project. 
Now, if you are given X project, Y project, Z project, and if you have to select only one project from X, Y, Z, that case is you will accept one project from these three based on highest NPV. So if you use the concept of NPV to determine internal rate of return, then internal rate of return calculation is very simple, very easy. How? First, what we have already mentioned, internal rate of return means what? We say internal rate of return is the rate where NPV is zero, means present value of cash inflows equals present value of cash outflows, both the same. So at that point, your present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows, both the same. So if you exceed this rate, obviously you will have profit. How do we calculate IRR? This is called trial and error method. That means we will use a method where we need to go for try and we will make error. And these way trial and error, trial and error, you will get your result. What's the formula of calculating internal rate of return? A plus C divided by C minus D into B minus A. Now you have to remember what are this? A is called low trial rate. Means we are already familiar with discount rate. We use discount rate to convert our future cash flow to present value. So here we will use two discount rate. One is known as A, low trial rate. Another one is known as B, high trial rate. Means we have to assume two different discount rates. Suppose you are given one 12%, so you can assume another discount rate is 20%. But we have to be careful at the time of selecting discount rate. We need to try to select two different discount rate in a way that if using one discount rate, suppose using 12% discount rate, if our NPV is positive, then we need to select another discount rate in a way that NPV will be negative. So normally, if your low discount rate, is, when your discount rate is lower, NPV becomes positive. And when discount rate is higher, NPV becomes negative. So keeping this in our mind, we can easily assume two different discount rate. One is lower trial rate or discount rate. Another one is high trial rate. And then what is C and D? So using lower discount rate, if you calculate NPV, that NPV is known as C or NPV at low trial. Mm -hmm. And using high discount rate, you have to calculate NPV again, that is known as NPV at high trial rate. So what does it mean? It means you have to assume two trial rate first or two discount rate first. One is lower and another end is higher. And then you have to calculate two NPVs. One is based on low trial rate. Another one is based on high trial rate. Now put all the values. 
low trial rate plus NPV at low trial rate divided by NPV at low trial rate minus NPV at high trial rate into high trial rate minus low trial rate. And these way we can calculate IRR and IRR is that rate of return where NPV is zero. So now you have to calculate two different IRR. We can use example to calculate IRR. Now you see that already we have calculated NPV using 12% discount rate. 12% discount rate, what was our NPV here? You see, we have calculated NPV here using 12% discount rate, this one. So here already we have calculated NPV and PV at 12% discount rate. And what we have got, we have got our NPV is 10,768 means it is positive NPV. So we need another NPV with a higher trial rate. So we can go for a straight with very high trial rate, suppose, uh, suppose uh, higher trial rate is 30%. Now, we can calculate another NPV with higher trial rate like NPV at 30%. Then same example, use it 34,432 divided by one plus 0 0.30 to the power one. The second one will be Taka 39,530 divided by one plus 0 0.30 to the power two plus Taka 39,359 divided by one plus 0 0.30 to the power three plus Taka 32,000 219 divided by 1 plus 0 0.30 to the power 4. This is present value of cash inflows minus Taka 1 lakh. That is present value of cash outflows. So now I am requesting you to use your calculator and find out NPV and share with us using chat box. So calculate it and give us the calculated result. Share with us using chat. So dear students, from your uh, calculation, we have found NPV is 20,928 and this is negative. So now we have already calculated two different NPVs. One is NPV at the rate of 12%, the result is 10,768. 10,768. So here we have got one 10,700. 68 and another one is 20,000, how much? 20,928. Now we can use the formula to solve the problem. What it is? So A, our lower trial rate was 12% plus C, NPV at lower trial rate. 
that was 10,768, 10,768 divided by 10,768 minus and minus, you know, that is plus 20 because that is minus and B minus negative and PV. 20,928, so minus, and the formula minus plus 20,928 into B minus A, that is our higher trial rate is 30% minus 12%. Oh, I'm writing very clearly here. I, I'm using, uh, I'm writing here what it is. So our I, R R equals twelve percent plus ten thousand seven hundred sixty eight divided by ten thousand seven hundred sixty eight plus twenty thousand nine hundred twenty eight into 30% minus 12%. Now again, use your calculator and find out the rate and I'm waiting for your uh, reply. So dear participants from your feedback, uh, I have found you have calculated, uh, uh, your, your calculated answer is 0.1, Eight one. That means eighteen point one one percent. So our internal rate of return is eighteen point one one percent. That means this is the rate at what present value of cash inflows equals present value of cash outflows. So this way we can calculate internal rate of return, but at the beginning of today's discussion, I have mentioned you that if you need to go for capital rationing, that means you have limited budget. Within limited budget, if you have to select more projects, you have to select more than one project, that time profitability index is better than NPV. Calculating NPV, you will get better result from profitability. So what is profitability index? I have already mentioned, how can we calculate profitability index? I mentioned profitability index equals present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows. So just calculate present value of cash inflows that already you have calculated at 12% and also you have calculated at 30%. So present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflows. You can calculate profitability index. Now I need to prove that for capital rationing, for selecting more projects from limited budget, it is better to use profitability index. For this, you have one very good example in front of you. You see, you are given a table where you have many projects. You have how many projects? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight projects. You are also given your initial cash outflows that how much you have to invest in these projects. You don't need to calculate anything because we have already practiced how to calculate NPV, how to calculate IRR, and we know that if you know to calculate NPV, you can easily calculate PI because just present below of cash inflows divided by present below of cash outflows. 
you are given results. So we have already calculated IRR of all these projects and we have got IRR 15%, 19, 28, 26, 20, 37, 25, 80. We are also given LNPV from project A, your NPV is 12,000, from B, 15,000, from C, 42,000, then 1,000, dot, dot, dot. You are also given the result of PI. That is 1.24 and dot, 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 dot. What we want to prove, we want to prove that within limited budget, if you have to select more projects from these FECDFGH, it is better to use PI, profitability index, than NPV. How? Just see. From NPV, you can find out where NPV is highest. I found here NPV is highest, 42,000. But before that, we want to know how much budget we have. We have only Taka 65,000 as budget, only 65,000. So we need to allocate these capital very efficiently so that we can have highest benefits from the selection of projects from many alternatives. Now, how much budget we have? We have already seen that our budget is only 65,000. Now, based on NPV, if we calculate, then you see that we can select project C because NPV is very high. So select project C. How much budget you have? 65,000. If you select project C, then you have to invest Taka 30,000. So invest Taka 30,000. You have only 35,000 in your hand. Now go to the second highest NPV. I found this is second highest NPV, 15,000. The project is B. So when you select C, your NPV is 42,000. When you select B, your NPV is 15,000. And you have to invest Taka 35,000. So you have 35,000 and you have to invest 35,000. Now you have no money in your hand. So based on NPP, if you select projects, you can select only two projects. One is C and one is B, and your total NPV is 57,000 taka. Now we want to select projects again using profitability index concept. Now, where is the highest profitability index? We have highest profitability index here, 2.50. So you can select the same project C and your NPV is 42,000. Your budget 65,000. And if you select C, you have to invest 30,000. You have 35,000. Now see the second highest profitability index. I found this is second highest, 2.3. The project is G. So this is G and NPV is 13,000. And I have to invest 10,000 here, 10,000 here. I have still 25,000 in my pocket. And what is the third highest profitability index? This is third highest, 
I can select one more project that is F. My NPV is 11,000 and I have to invest 10,000. Oh my God, it's still I have 15,000. Now the fourth largest PI is 1.67, that is E. So I can invest in E. NPV is 10,000 and I have to invest 15,000. I have no money, so I can invest more. Using profitability index, I have selected C, G, F, E, four projects, and our NPV is 0, 0, 0, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 76,000. So if we use profitability index, we can select more projects with limited budget of 65,000, and our NPV is, 76,000. When we use only NPV, we can select only two projects and NPV is also less, 57,000. These way, for project managers, profitability index is really better than NPV. So a project manager can use payback period, average rate of return, net present value, internal rate of return, and profitability index for selecting a project selecting more projects also. But for capital rationing, for selecting more projects, obviously profitability index is good, better than NPV.